The Hunter Becomes the Hunted was Izzy Adesanya playing possum with Alex Perea. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. First, let's go ahead and get into uh, what I think it was that Adesanya saw uh, and why he felt comfortable laying on the ropes. I don't want to say comfortable because we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but Hair put down here, he throws the right hand, gets to position one, blasts out of that position with his same leaping left hook kind of thing. And we can see there's kind of a little bit of a lag there, right, where the arm kind of swings and there's like a, a beat there. And Alex Perea even acknowledges beat, beat, boom. And he gets back to the line by kind of showing Izzy, no, 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 no. I wasn't out of position. I was ready, okay? Here he's going to come forward, jab. And now notice he makes contact with that and then immediately pulls his head out of the line. This is something that he doesn't do all the time when he comes out of a left hook, but he does do it when he throws his straight punches. Like this left hook here, we can see that he clearly gets stuck at the beat, at the pace, at the rhythm of the fight that it's going, if you watch the clip, that there's a break there, and it's different, right? Gets on the line, lands the hook, stays here, doesn't move his head, okay? Now, I think Adesanya wound up fi finding a timing, okay, where Poton is going to throw that shot. And now what we want to look at is his feet here. Because see how his feet kind of shuffle forward? He kind of pendulum steps with that, um, with that hook. And that tells Adesanya, oh, there's going to be a break here, okay? And what I want to discuss here real quick is if we take a look at this clip here, this is early in the round, round number two, right, 352. Alex Perea, after these, after this right hand right here, or this uh, that he eats from Adesanya, he doesn't throw any more left hooks for the rest of the round, all the way up until this point. Okay, he threw one at the beginning of this sequence, one little tapping one, and then he threw a right hand to the body. Um, but this is literally the second left hook since that time, and he kind of leaps with it. And again, I think that that tells Adesanya that there's going to be a beat there. Adesanya catches him with a jab right there, one, two, and is able to hurt him. And this winds up being the kind of beginning of the end for uh, Perea. Now, we're going to take a look at a few different things, okay? Number one, here he comes in with the leaping left hook. Boom, gets planted, he's about to land, and we can see Adesanya not just landing one punch, right? Not just landing the right hand, but landing the jab first, stunning him, and then catching him with the right hand after um, a sequence that he practiced over and over and over again to control Perea, keep him locked up in that spot, and then hit him with the shot right after. Um, ironic that it winds up working here when he's planted, uh, which is literally the worst place for him to be at. Uh, right, Because here at the beginning of this sequence, we can see that Adesanya might be actually waiting on the ropes for this left hook. Um, there's a right hand to the body that he eats. He literally eats a flying knee, which takes forever to set up in fight terms. Like so many beats, so much goes on while he's on the ropes here. And then as soon as the left hook comes, boom, that tells Adesanya, oh, it's time to explode. Beat, beat, and catches him with that shot, shoves Perea off the line, and then Perea comes back. Okay, now, we're going to take a look at a couple of things here, okay? Now, this is something that if you pay attention in Perea's sparring, this is something that happens in a lot of his sparring, okay? We can see the straight punches he's doing fine here, a little hook thing like there, and we can see him being susceptible to attacks, right? Not really defending the line here. Now, there's a few reasons for this, right? Number one... Not that Alex Perea doesn't find sparring partners that are taller than him. He has that one guy that he fought like three times um, in his sparring partner camp. Um, so sometimes he does. I do want, if you guys go check the clips out, he spars that guy way different than he spars anyone else with his hands down like this. Um, but that beat is there for his opponent to try to exploit with that hook. We're going to see him try to do another one, I think, here. Boom, beat, boom, and catches him right here, okay? Now, again... After the hook, Perea winds up being a little bit off balance, right? He kind of throws that shot, puts a little bit more effort into it. Um, we're going to talk about the drill that he does that with, but a few of the reasons why Alex Perea doesn't pay for that more often, well, number one, uh, he's probably hitting you pretty damn hard, right? Remember when he caught Izzy against the fence in the first fight? Caught him with that clean hook, boom! And, uh, you know... Not only was that the punch that later wound up hurting him, but he caught him with that punch a few times. Even while Adesanya was literally waiting for it. It was still too fast and too hard 
um, for him to ignore, um, uh, not uh, to interact with it. Right? It was still it was still more than enough to push him off his line and disrupt whatever his plan was on that beat on that rhythm. Okay. Now, real quick, just a couple more little clips about it. Okay. Jab, peel, right? Hook thing. And now his opponent is trying to follow him back, right? This sparring partner here, very aware of those patterns as well, where there's a beat after the hook. Obviously, he's not throwing the shot hard here, right? He's just kind of probing with it, boop, right? And he gets to end it, okay? But we see him a little bit more live here, boom, wide swinging, right? And his opponent checking the line. Again, even when he's throwing it kind of wide here, kind of slow probing, Right, still, you can see the exaggeration, the positioning of him, uh, where he's going to throw that, his head movement, but that there's that beat there. Even though he's not stepping and leaping with this one, uh, you can see it. Now, this brings us to his heavy bag work, and to be honest, I love his heavy bag work. I think it's sick. He's getting a lot of weight into it, he's getting to do a lot of cool drills, but we can see how when he throws these leaping left hooks, he's putting so much effort into them uh, that the beat, 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 beat right? Beat, beat, beat. The left hook is, there's always a beat after, right? Even when he throws the second one here, boom, 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 and then he's going to leap. The right hand is still um, a little bit late, okay? Now, this is interesting because he's doing this because he's chasing the bag, right? Kind of, like the bag is not really moving all that much. It is swinging away from him, changing ever so slightly. As he changes positions ever so slightly, but where is Adesanya going? Right? Why is he leaping here? Why is he allowing his footwork to change, right, when he does that move? Why is he throwing that all, all that effort, all that, right? Well, he does think, again, we, I, like we were going to talk about, he does think that Izzy is done, right? Now, Adesanya, I do believe he was probably waiting for the left hook. Um, and then trying to time that beat after because um, Perea does put so much effort into that shot. He does kind of, you know, snatch it, just really whoosh. And, um, um, but I, I also don't think that Adesanya was going to be making it out of the round, okay? I think that his legs were done, um, you know, that, that that was like, you know, his last stand, you know, and, and congrats to Adesanya, okay? This is his black belt test. This is like, this is everything you need to say that you're a great martial artist. Like a great one, you know? Against all odds, right? Oh, you know, Adesanya, uh, you're only good in your division because you're bigger than everybody that you face. You're taller, you're longer, you're faster because of it. Um, yada, yada, yada. And then he goes and he beats a guy who's bigger than him, stronger than him, has more reach than him, right? He has a guy that has the advantages that are assumed to be on Adesanya all this time, and he beats that guy. He finds a way to make it not about his tools or his opponent's tools, because as we saw, his tools were failing, right? Um, even though I do think Adesanya did a good job of not being on the line most of the fight, as we saw, most of the fight he was not on the line with Pereira uh, until, you know, he was in danger, very, very big, huge danger. But Pereira was landing a lot of leg kicks. You know, he was controlling the space. He would find times uh, to connect. And also more dangerous, right, or dangerous as well, um, he was starting to get closer with the head kicks as well because Adesanya had to be so wary of the leg kicks because they're doing so much damage. Um, it's going to make him even more and more susceptible to the head kicks. And I just don't – I think in this fight that he – his back was up against the wall. He was about to lose the fight, and he found a spot that he remembered from earlier in the fight um, and wound up getting a KO. I thought it was, it was brilliant. You know, um, I was super happy for him. Um, yeah, it's great work. Great work. <clears throat> now, uh, a little bit about um, Alex Perea's work here. One of the reasons he's throwing this shot, right? Two foot punching, right? Alex Perea likes to keep his weight on the front foot here, right? Over the front knee. Um, notice he's got his flat, his front, front foot flat, the ball of the back foot, and he's going to be able to throw 
all of his punches from the same footwork pattern. He doesn't really have to deviate right hand, left hook, right? And he's jumping off of both feet when he throws this punch. This is a leaping left hook, okay? Now, one of the things that Alex Perea does so well is that he finds a way to get his whole body into these punches on the heavy bag by driving from both feet each time he punches, okay? It's very important that you understand that he's using, he's not just pushing from one side to the other, right? He's jumping and pushing with both feet each time he punches, and it allows him to create a correct base to allow him to drive his weight into his opponent, not just to his other foot, okay? It's very, very, very important. Uh, that's a Fouts boxing theory. That's something that, uh, a teaching method and a theory that I discovered and created, um, but it's two, my two-foot punching theory, and it explains how all the great fighters throughout all of history have been able to be so athletic and move the way that they do. Roy Jones Jr., um, you know, people like like uh, Nayoya Inoue, Better Beef. People think that Better Beef has this unreal power, and it's like he's good with one piece of his kinetic chain that most people aren't. You know, he has a correct footwork structure. Now. Um, Alex Perea has this great leaping left hook or this great front foot left hook here. And I want to tell you guys in the Fouts Boxing Combat System, we have a better one. Not only can we throw that hook from the front foot position, throw that hook, but we also have drills and things to teach us how to get off the line um, in a drill, in a theory. And uh, um, uh, how do you say it? A fight system called the track, okay, to teach you what punches you should be throwing from what position so you can understand where you are in the ring, when you're in danger, uh, where you should be moving each, each time, and how to do that while controlling the line and then getting onto the line and landing your, your most powerful, devastating punch, okay? Now, the two-foot punching structure and the two-foot punching theory is a derivative of the one-inch punch, okay? And Bruce Lee taught it was from the hip, and I believe he was wrong. I believe it's from the foot. And you want to be driving your weight from both feet to create a correct structure so that there's no, there's no pushback on your entire kinetic chain as you look to drive it into your opponent. Now... <clears throat> Again, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System in the description below. It's two ninety nine. It, I will teach you how to hit hard, not only not only like you know punch hard harder, but use the one inch punch technique to add power to all of your punches. Not just teach you how to throw a straight punch, but teach you how to throw a hook, a proper hook, a real power punching one inch punch hook. Okay. Um. Michael Jai White's been posting stuff since I since I posted the stuff there. Michael Jai White has been posting a lot of stuff about the fabled one inch punch and how it's this and that and uh, he's got this new snap technique and that's my snap technique. <laughs> uh, and he's trying to rip it off of uh, Bruce Lee uh, by using the same exact things and theories that Bruce Lee said while discrediting him. But um. But the entire system that I'm teaching, the Fouts Boxing Combat System, is a derivative of the one-inch punch and a better way to teach the one-inch punch structure so that every single person on the planet can generate power. But not only that, not only am I going to teach you that discovery of two-foot punching and how to really generate power, how any person on the planet can generate power, but I'm also going to teach you what to do with your hands, the correct structures, the correct things to do with your hands to generate power and snap as well. Not only so you generate power, but you generate speed, okay? You really learn to hit hard. Again, I'm going to teach you what to do with every single piece of your kinetic chain. That way you don't get locked into what this is, a very good drill for Perea. But what he's trying to do is get a better workout. He's trying to get maximum effort into it. But notice, there's not a lot of head movement. There's not a lot of weight transition to his back foot. There's not a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's missing for a lot of different reasons, okay? And a lot of it has to do with the fact that he doesn't know how to get the most, the absolute most out of his kinetic chains. Pound for pound, he still has great strikes in these zones, right? But when you're training, you're always looking to get a better workout, right? Find a way to make your, your workout more difficult. So he's adding the leaping punch because that's one of the only ways that he can still throw the same punches that he throws in his fights, with that same pace, that same rhythm, that same timing as a fight pace. Oh, I need to be this fast to compete at a world level. Wow, did I make it? Did I make it? And he can still do that without breaking any of the other rules. So that's how he adds the challenge and adds the athleticism to it. Um, but unfortunately, if he knew what to do with the rest of his kinetic chain, 
um, he could still do that, but still find a way to generate more power, still find a way to generate more of a workout um, if he had a couple of more things. Again, check out the Faust Boxing Combat System. Okay, It's going to teach you everything you need to know, even if you're a beginner. Okay, Now, um, if you're a female fighter, Okay, if you're a woman and you want to learn self-defense or you want to learn this and you want to learn whatever, 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 check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Even as a woman, it will teach you how to use your body exactly like a man does. And pound for pound, you will generate power just like a man. And if you work hard and you train hard, you will hit hard like a man. I guarantee it. Okay, These drills and these theories... They're going to change all of combat sports history, okay? Everyone in the world is going to have power now, okay? So anyway, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, blah, 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 blah.